I want to say that there's over 100 insights to go through, so I'm not going to go through them all. This is just a quick summary of the key things that you can see. Secondly, I want to mention that I use a DNA test by a brand called Mudu, M-U-H-D-O. So if you want to Google them and have a look at more information on their website, please feel free to do so. Also note that I'm an official reseller, so I can beat their online prices. So if you are interested in doing a DNA test, come to me and I can see what price I can get you that's going to beat what's on the website. So first off, we'll start in the physical section. I'm going to skip over most of these insights, but generally what this tells you is what you're genetically good at. Um, so what sports you may enjoy, for example, based on some of these factors. Some of the ones that really jump out to me that are more useful is understanding injury risk, soft tissue inflammation. So this can uh, show basically how inflamed you can get after a workout. So this in combination with say recovery rate, you may want to change your post-workout nutrition or recovery plan based on these things. So next up, we'll dive into the dietary section. So the top four, top five, sorry, here are really, really key. This is where you can really um, direct the way of your eating. Okay, so really choose what sort of foods are gonna be best for you to maintain the best uh, physique, best level of body fat, should we say, or even if you want to lose fat or gain muscle, this will really help you. So understanding where you have beneficial or not so good responses to different macronutrients and different types of fats. Okay, so this area is really going to tailor the sort of broad basis of how you how you should be eating if you want to provide optimal performance. Okay. Next up, let's take a quick look into vitamins. So we all have um, different vitamin and mineral deficiencies and risks of those deficiencies. So some people do not process different vitamins and minerals very well. So if there's an increased risk, this roughly means you have about 40% decrease in the efficiency of that process. So as an example, let's take uh, selenium, for example, my body does not process selenium well. So if I was taking on 100 units of selenium, I'm actually going to absorb and make use of, let's say about 60. So I need to consume additional selenium to the average person. So these, of course, are all unique to an individual. Uh, now, vitamin mineral deficiency is really important for things like tiredness, fatigue, energy, even impacting sleep. So whilst it might seem a little boring on the face of it, these can have a massive, massive impact on your life and also uh, reducing risk of metabolic diseases, even longevity. So this is a key area then. And then here we have some additional ones, things like omega-3s, uh, not a vitamin or mineral, but a really key essential fatty acid. Um, and then a few different supplements that some are going to be beneficial, some are going to be a waste of money. So that's quite important to understand that. Uh, here, a key one for me really is caffeine sensitivity, understanding how caffeine really affects you. For some people, it can last up to sort of 12 hours within the body. Some people, it can be about four. So really understanding your genetic variances here, it's quite important. And then some of these risks here, um, but we'll cover those more later on. So we can understand some factors around stress, especially caffeine and stress is a very important one. Understanding which different factors help or go against impacting your stress. And then sleep, this is a big one for me, especially stress affecting sleep and caffeine affecting sleep. Put those in combination with sleep duration and you can really start to, you know, you might want to push to longer sleep, um, try and reduce stress, especially around time of going to bed watch that caffeine intake that's going to be in combination with the caffeine sensitivity that we looked at earlier so a few more i'm going to skip over anti-aging because if you're looking after yourself in the present moment you are probably going to be aging better than most uh, injury risks so for example for myself running might not be the best activity because of these bone joint strength i want to make sure i'm doing resistance exercises because i have a slight risk here and then just watching my form with different exercises for my lower back. Some things around mental health, a uh, key insight for me here is caffeine and focus. Understand there's a negative impact, right? This varies quite a lot from negative to positive. It's quite an interesting one that may help sway your caffeine intake. Gut health, gut is really underrated. It has a massive impact on your mood, um, on the absorption of the foods that you eat. So you can literally get more nutrition if you have good positive gut health. So again, understanding these different risks and what you can do about it. So that's pretty much it I'm going to cover. If you do have any questions, please reach out.